In this video, we're going to talk about how we can automate Azure tasks using scripts and PowerShell. Now, the scripts and PowerShell capabilities built into Azure is amazing. Uh, basically, it allows you to perform a single task multiple times via loops and other processes, whereas uh, instead of having to manually go through the web page in order to ma uh, manually perform these tasks, we can create them via PowerShell and then automate the tasks over and over and over. This is really helpful if, say, uh, you have a test environment that you need to take down and then bring back up. Uh, you could easily create a PowerShell script, one that takes it down and deletes it, and then the second one that brings it back online and populates everything as appropriate. That way, instead of going through and, say, building out 10 or 20 servers via the console or via the, uh, the web portal, you simply have one single PowerShell script that you run, and then it takes care of it all of it for you. So let's go ahead and get started. We'll go ahead into the introduction here, and it starts talking off about how we can use admin scripts in order to optimize our workflow. The awesome thing about this, not only does it streamline your workflow, not only does it speed you up, but it also kind of makes it impossible to do errors. Once you've created the workflow and you've tested it, it works pretty much every time. There's no possibility of typos. Uh, let's see, so it talks about some prerequisites. Uh, the expectation is that you do have some experience with PowerShell. Uh, this is really just going to be an introduction on how you can use PowerShell, and then the expectation is that you know enough about PowerShell to then find out the additional Azure commands. Let's see, next unit. Uh, decide if PowerShell is right for your task. And really the question here is, one, do you know PowerShell? Um, how, how well do you know PowerShell? So if you know PowerShell pretty well, uh, then this is gonna be a starting point for you. Uh, the sec second question is going to be, well, how frequently are you doing this task? Is it a one-off thing or is it something you're gonna be doing over and over and over? Uh, things that you would do over and over and over, for instance, would be a task that you do every single morning. Well, every single morning I turn on servers. Okay, well maybe that's a task that could be automated. Uh, as opposed to a one-off thing of, hey, I just got a request from the CEO, he's asking for uh, a VM to you know, host videos for his daughter's birthday. Well, that's going to be a one-time thing. You're not necessarily going to need to automate that because you'll spend more time automating it than you will um, actually saving from it. And then the last question is, uh, well, um, do, do you know the Azure CLI better than possibly the Azure portal, uh, in which case you might want to use that instead of the portal? Uh, yeah. So there's the, the available tools, and really it's just a balance between which tool you use. Uh, let's see, very first, or very quickly, uh, the Azure CLI versus Azure PowerShell. Uh, the Azure CLI, I always suggest to read these backwards. Uh, so this, this command, azvm create, if we read that backwards, create a VM in Azure. Oh, that, that makes a little bit more sense to my English speaking brain. I want to create a VM in Azure. Makes it a little bit easier for me to understand. The PowerShell command follows, well, pretty much standard Azure nomenclature. Azure. The PowerShell command follows standard PowerShell nomenclature of verb dash noun. And in this case, new dash AZVM. So new Azure VM. The properties between uh, between the PowerShell command and the uh, AZ CLI are pretty much the same thing. Uh, you see resource group and right down here resource group. The descriptions of how they're written are a little bit different, but it's still looking for a resource group. Uh, name, name, image, image. So they're pretty similar, although there may be some distinctions between them. Um, how to choose? Well, yeah, do you need to automate? Uh, what's the learning curve 
to, to automate this? Uh, how much effort do you need to put in to automate this task? If it's gonna take you 10 hours to try to automate a task and the task only takes you 10 hours over a year to do, it may not be worth it. And then your team skill set. Uh, if your team has a very strong, say, Linux background, and therefore you have a uh, command line or a bash shell uh, team skill set, then don't worry about learning PowerShell, learn the Azure CLI. Uh, or vice versa, if you have a really good Windows PowerShell background, then learn the PowerShell, but not the Azure CLI. All right, next new unit, unit uh, installing PowerShell. Now, PowerShell comes installed by default on Windows. So if you're running a Windows machine, chances are you have PowerShell installed. That's awesome. It's that easy. Uh, let's see. So to be installed, you need the base PowerShell product. If you don't have a Windows machine that you're running on, maybe you're running on a Macintosh or a Linux machine, there is a PowerShell core utility or PowerShell core feature that you can go ahead and install on these platforms. It doesn't hold all of the PowerShell features. However, it does hold pretty much everything you need in order to work in Azure. Once PowerShell is installed on your computer, you then need to install the Azure PowerShell module. Now what this is, is this is specific commands that work specifically for Azure. They're not included in the base PowerShell product because well, there's a whole bunch of modules out there, and if you put them all in the base PowerShell, it just would be so huge, you would never, never be able to run it. Uh, so the PowerShell module uh, is a separate add-on. It's a pretty much a piece of cake to get installed. Uh, so first step, PowerShell core. Uh, yep, there's lots of different instructions depending on what type of Linux uh, that you're running, uh, as well as if you're using Mac. Uh, otherwise, installing the Azure PowerShell module, the one thing you need to worry about is what version you, of PowerShell you're running before you move forward. And it actually says, go ahead and run this command right here, this PS version table .ps version. And I went ahead and ran, well, just PS version table. Uh, you can see the PS version row right here. And it says, if the major version is lower than 5.0, you can see here my major version is 5.1. So it's above 5.0, uh, therefore I don't need to upgrade my PowerShell. If that says, say, 4.9, what I would need to do is I would need to click on this link here, open it up in a new tab. Uh, so for, say for instance, if this is uh, uh, a Windows Server 2012 R2, uh, it comes with 4.0 installed. So I would click this WMF 5.1 link, go ahead and download Windows Management Framework 5.1 and install it on my machine. All right, next step, installing the Azure PowerShell feature. Uh, talks about the commandlets. Yep, what is, where are the PowerShell modules? Uh, you can just run get module, show you what modules are installed. Uh, and then installing the Azure module, we use the install module command. Hey, that's that's really handy. Uh, pretty much what you do is you just run this command right here. We want to install a module, uh, specifically the module named AZ for Azure. Allow clobber so there can be some confusion between different modules uh, that might have the same names for some of their tasks. And that's saying, yes, that's okay. And then skip publisher check. <clears throat> So just go ahead and get it. Don't necessarily be too concerned about the source. I went ahead and ran that on my personal Windows 10 machine. <clears throat> and we can see right here, yep, ran the, ran the command. Uh, it says, hey, uh, this is an untrusted repository. You're getting this file from somewhere I've never seen before. Are you sure you wish to trust PS Gallery? I said, yes, and it finished. Uh, it took a couple of minutes for it to download and install all the components, but it finished without issue. Uh, there are some warnings here. For instance, it may prompt you twice, uh, one time to install NuGet, uh, and then the second time to install from PS Gallery. Just say yes for both of those. And you may get some error messages. Uh, some of them are one example, which is right here. And 
normally this can actually be pretty self-explanatory. This would be a big red, big bunch of red text that would show up on your screen. But if you read through it, it does actually tell you a little bit about what the problem is. It says right here, cannot be loaded because running scripts is disabled on this system. So you can go ahead and look to see, hey, why can't I run scripts? And they actually say, uh, you might need to change your execution policy to remotely sign. Now, if you've worked with PowerShell a lot, that right there is perfectly like obvious to you. Uh, if you haven't really worked with PowerShell a whole lot, that might be new to you. Basically, that's saying, what kind of scripts should I trust? Should I trust all scripts or just specific types? And here we're saying, yeah, go ahead and trust scripts if they're signed. If somebody has gone ahead and written their signature on it to confirm that they are valid scripts. Uh, if necessary, you can run update module to finally update it uh, just to make sure you're up into the latest version. All right, and now we get into an example. We'll go through this quickly because we're actually going to do the same thing in the next step. Uh, this is talking about creating a resource group. So what we do, there's four steps. First off is we import the Azure commandlets and that is import desk module AZ. So we installed it up here on this line and now we're importing it, which means we're making it available for us to, uh, to run commands from. Once we've imported it, then we can go ahead and do the connect uh, command in order to connect up to Azure and authenticate to Azure. Uh, we then run a new, I think it's new AZ resource group command in order to create the resource group. And then we can just simply verify what those are. Um, there we go. Import module AZ, connect AZ account, select your subscription. Oh, I missed that step. Select the subscription and then create the resource group right there. New AZ resource group. And then lastly, verify the resources such as get AZ resource, which will show you all the resource groups. In theory, once all that's done, then we can create a new uh, virtual machine. And again, the PowerShell commandlets are somewhat self-descriptive. Uh, same format as before, verb dash noun. Uh, verb in this case is new. The noun or the object it's working on is an Azure VM. And yeah, let's just continue on and let's do the exam, the exercise here. So I'm going to go ahead and activate the sandbox. Uh, while that's activating, we'll look at what's going on here. Basically, we're going to do and we're going to create a new VM. Uh, let's look down at the commands here. So new AZ VM with a resource group, the name, our, the credentials that we want the VM to log in with, the location for the VM to be, what type of VM should it be, uh, what operating system, and then any kind of firewall ports. Now, one thing you may notice as, we going, as we're going through here is we're not necessarily telling it to connect to Azure. Uh, in the prior page, we did a connect AZ resources, uh, something like that, in order to log into Azure. In this particular exercise, it's having us run through the Azure Cloud Shell over here on the right. The Azure Cloud Shell automatically is logged into Azure, therefore we don't need to tell it to connect. It's just automatically connected. All right, almost done. There we go, authenticating to Azure. Yes, okay. So the Azure Cloud Shell, I uh, guess I should mention, there's two Cloud Shells you can get. Uh, one that is running the Azure CLI and one that is using PowerShell. This is in PowerShell right now. You can see right here it says PS on the left-hand side. That means it's PowerShell. It means I can run the PowerShell commands. Up here in the welcome it says type AZ to use the CLI. All right, so if I want to change back to the Azure CLI, I can just simply type AZ. Otherwise, I'm ready for the Azure PowerShell. I'm going to copy this into a notepad just to take a better look at it. So new AZVM, right? 
uh, create it in this resource group, which just happens to already have been created for me. Name the VM this, attach credentials to it. And those, those are the credentials I'm going to type in. Uh, it will actually prompt me when I paste that in. Uh, which location, which image, and which ports to open. So before I run that, yeah, okay, let's go ahead and copy and paste that in and enter. It will ask me for username and password, so I'll just call this test admin password 0123. So now it's building out my Ubuntu LTS machine. Uh, it will create a user called test admin with the password of admin123. Awesome, that easy, one command line. Now, if I was to do that through the web portal, I would have to log into the web portal. I would then have to create resource. Uh, let's see, that was an Ubuntu LTS. Come in here, select my resource group, select the name, uh, select the location, availability, image, blah, blah, blah. A lot of things have to be set through uh, with, with my mouse right here. But the fact that I'm doing it all through PowerShell means it's just one copy and paste. So if I'm doing this multiple times, it's that easy. All right, so when it's done, we can then run this PowerShell command right here. Let's actually look at that in Notepad. So in this case, we're doing get azvm. The prior command we did was new azvm. Uh, this one is just simply getting information about it. Uh, again, we tell it the name in the resource group, and then it's going to save that into a variable called vm. Once we have all that saved into a variable, then we can start acting against it. Uh, let's see, it's still installing, so let's look at the next commands. Uh, acting against it and getting the hardware profile, the OS disk, and so on. Well, let's go ahead and try that. All right, so we went ahead and got the VM. Now, if I do dollar sign VM, that gives me, well, pretty much all the information I saw when we created it. Okay, but what if I wanted specific information about it? Well, VM.hardware profile if I spell it properly. A standard DS1. All right, hey, that's kind of nice. Um, what about the storage profile? OS disk. Ah, uh, well, that's, uh, here's the disk. It, it's the OS type is Linux. Uh, it has caching for both read and write, and it is 30 gigs in size. That's kind of nice. Ooh, what about the public IP address? Let's actually, let's look. Uh, when I ran .vm or dollar sign .vm, I don't see an IP address in here at all. Oh, so just like with normal PowerShell, we can start chaining commands in order to get more details. So dollar sign .vm piped into get dash az public IP address. There we go. And returns back right there, IP address 13.82.226.93. Now again, all this information is happening in Azure, so I can still come back here to the Azure portal and look at the resources here. There's my test VM and, and get the same IP and all that information through here. But this requires kind of browsing around in a web browser, you clicking with the mouse and hoping everything works properly. Uh, let's see, so with the IP address, let's go ahead and SSH in. So see, I did test admin at, and the IP address up there is 13.82.226.93. Yes, password 0123. And now I can see, yes, I'm logged in as test admin at, and then my VM name. Perfect, all right. So that was the process, literally one command in order to create this virtual machine. Yeah, literally one command. Let's go ahead and delete it. 
Well, this one's gonna be two commands. Uh, the first one, we're going to stop the virtual machine. Yes. Uh, and we can look again, uh, verb dash noun, uh, stop dash az VM. Which VM? Well, the, the VM we've been working with. Uh, which resource group? Well, the, the resource group that the VM is in. Awesome. All right, well, once it's stopped, then we can go ahead and remove it with the same same type of command, except this time it's remove AZVM. So we've got new VM, new AZVM, get AZVM, stop AZVM, remove AZVM, all of these uh, very common type commands for PowerShell. Let's see, actually, ah, oh, there we go. Uh, succeeded, okay. And then remove it. Paste. Yes. And while we're removing this, if we go back to home, uh, let's look at all resources. We should see the virtual machine is missing. Hopefully. The virtual machine, okay, it's still there. Uh, it's going away shortly. Uh, these other resources, such as the NIC and the security group and the disk, may still all be there. So let's go and try get az resource. This will give us a print of all the resources that are in our environment. Which is very similar back to the portal here of the uh, all resources tab. Still taking its time. So the virtual machine is gone out of this view, but the network interface, the security group, IP address, and so on still exist. And that's what we'll see here. We've got the OS disk. Uh, I'm sure that's gonna tell us more if we were able to scroll to the right uh, for these other devices. So we may still need to remove additional things. Uh, let's see, dollar sign VM, remove AZ network interface. So remove the network interface. Uh, we've got a dash force at the end, which will force it to go away. It won't. It won't prompt us. It won't say, "Hey, I'm still in use." It'll just say, "Go." Don't. Don't tell me. Do not pass go. Do not collect two hundred dollars. Uh, same thing with the managed disk. Paste that in there, and then the virtual network and the NSG, and then finally the IP address. Let me actually copy and paste these into. Notepad, network, MSG, IP address. All right, and when that is all done, or when this guy is done, I'll just paste that in and we'll just kick them all off at the same time. All right, so the next step is to create and save resources in PowerShell. Let's see if I can duplicate this and go on. Uh, what it is, I want this to, I want this view to keep working. Uh, so I'm going to the next tab uh, in a different, go into the next page in a different tab, just so that it keeps working. All right, so now we start talking about creating scripts in PowerShell. Now, so far we ran one command and we created a virtual machine. We ran a couple of commands in order to delete the virtual machine. Why do we have to manually type in these commands? Sure, we could copy and paste these out of Notepad like I just showed, or we could actually create a PowerShell script that runs it all for us. And that's what this page is talking about. Uh, here, in fact, they actually have a screenshot of somebody doing just that. Uh, so for instance, we could see, yeah, okay, let's uh, let's go ahead and import the module AZ. Let's, let's import the Azure module. Uh, let's connect to an Azure account. Uh, steps, uh, lines eight and nine, create the VM name and the resource group. Uh, 12 sets up the credentials for the virtual machine. And then 15 creates the virtual machine. Well, it's just that easy. Hey, look at that. 
So once we've saved that into a PowerShell command or PowerShell script, then there's no question about doing a typo. What if we tried to type wingtip toys VM and we accidentally type wing top toys VM? Well, it's an, it's an honest typo, but it's still a typo that can cause issues. So creating this as a script and then simply running the script takes care of all of those issues for us. Uh, let's see, it talks a little bit about variables, talks about doing loops like we see right there, uh, and parameters. Hopefully, if you are familiar with PowerShell, uh, at least to a little bit, this isn't new to you. All right, great, that guy is done. So let's go ahead and continue on. Next step is going to be an additional exercise. All right, so in this case, we're going to create a script. Perfect. All right, so first thing it wants me to do is to change directory into a cloud drive. So you can see here I am, I'm in home Edric, and I believe, let's see if I do ls. There we go, there's a cloud drive directory that I want to change into. So I could just simply cd cloud drive, and I think that's where I'm gonna end up. Uh, just to be sure, I'm gonna copy and paste this. Yeah, uh, the, the path stays the same. Perfect. All right, next command, touch conference daily. Touch command basically creates a file. It creates an empty file. Uh, so if I do a dir, uh, we'll see there's my conference daily rest reset.ps1 specifically with a length of zero. It created an empty file. That's what the touch command did. All right, and now code. The code command opens up a text editor or a code editor. You'll see up here has the file name, conference daily reset.ps1. Uh, these three little dots on the right hand side, this allows me to save it and open additional files. I do still have the command line down here, so I can still run additional commands. Uh, but for right now, we're going to be focusing on the conference daily reset. If you wish, you can use a different editor. It's just a matter of then how do you get it up into the cloud shell. All right, first step, we want to add in a parameter into our script. So this, this cloud shell, this conference daily reset file is going to be a script. And we want to say, hey, when this script runs, we're going to expect a parameter. So let me go ahead and copy and paste that in. I can't right click paste. I have to use control V, control V. Now, again, this is a PowerShell thing. This says, hey, when this script runs, he's going to expect a resource group name as a parameter. We don't need to add in the connect AZ account like we saw in the screenshot over here. If we come back up. Uh, first off, we don't need the import module because we're actually running this in Azure. Uh, we don't need the connect AZ account because we're already in Azure. Uh, we're already authenticated. All right, next step is setting admin credentials. Go ahead and paste that in here. Uh, so it sets up a variable called admin credential and it prompts the user, sends out a message to the user, enter a username and password for the VM. It then runs the get credential command, which will prompt for both a username and the password. Yeah, that's kind of nice. All right, step six, let's go ahead and copy that in there. Uh, what this does is this sets up a loop. Uh, if you're not super familiar with a for loop, basically it goes through a list. Uh, in this case, the list is going to start at one. It's going to keep going while one while the while the number is less than or equal to three and then it's going to increment by one every single time so it's going to start at one and then two and then three and then exit out uh, in the loop step number seven we want to put this information in here so we're going to talk about hey we're going to create a virtual machine called conference demo something and then we're going to write that out to the screen and saying hey we're creating this vm so let me go ahead and copy that. 
And to be a good corporate citizen or good coding citizen, I'm going to indent my code a little bit just to make it a little bit more readable. All right, step eight, the next command is to do the new AZVM. So let me go ahead and copy that and paste it in. We'll, we'll dissect this fairly briefly. Uh, so we run the new AZVM command with a resource group called dollar sign resource group. That's the same one that's up here in the parameter that we're expecting when we kick off this script. The name of the VM is going to be dollar sign VM name. That's this guy right here. All right, uh, we're going to pass it some credentials and that's the admin credentials we got up here on this line right here. And then which image are we creating? Well, we're creating the Ubuntu LTS image. Uh, there could be a whole lot more options we could put in there such as the location and the size and so on. Uh, but for right now, we'll just keep this extremely simple. If we had any typos there, hopefully, this right here is the completed script, so we could, in fact, delete all of this and then copy and paste over. I'm going to try my luck, though. I'm going to keep it as is. In that case, I'm going to come up here to the three little dots. I'm going to say save. And then close editor. All right, and then lastly, we want to execute the script. Uh, so we've got this command down here. Uh, it starts off with a dot and forward slash, or dot backslash. That means there's a script in the current directory that we want to execute. Uh, and then that guy right there. And then remember, the script was waiting for a, uh, had a parameter for a resource group. That's this guy right here. This was provided to us by the lab, so we'll just stay with that. So copy, paste, hold on. There we go. Paste and enter. So which user do I want? Uh, test admin password 0123. And now it's creating VM conference demo one. As soon as it's done with that, it will create conference demo two and then conference demo three. So it's creating these VMs for me. In this case, three, but it could have been as easily 300. All right, so that's gonna take a couple minutes. Let me go back to this other tab. And we will actually go on to the summary page. So that was the exercise right there. Let's go to the summary. Talks again about the setup. Um, talks about the cleanup, how to clean it all up, uh, and the fact that the sandbox will remove it all on its own. And then we have a check your knowledge. Uh, let's see, the Azure portal, CLI, and PowerShell offer significantly different services. So it's unlikely that all three of them will support the operation you need. This one is actually false. Uh, they, they provide the same services. Uh, there may be occasions where some provide some features, some specific aspects that you can't get. Uh, for instance, the, the CLI or the PowerShell may add some parameters to creating a virtual machine that weren't available otherwise, uh, but it, they are, for the most part, uh, provide all the same services. Uh, number two, suppose you're building a video, video editing application that will offer online storage for user-generated content. You'll store the videos in Azure blobs, so you need to create a storage account to contain the blob. Once the a storage account is in place, it is unlikely you would remove and recreate it because this would delete all the user videos. Which tool is likely to offer the quickest and easiest way to create the storage account? Well, this one seems a little bit of a red herring. Which one is the quickest and easiest? Uh, well, I mean, the CLI and PowerShell are both very, very quick. Uh, once you have the command, it is literally copy and paste, and, and that's it. But that's not necessarily the easiest. Uh, the description up here set, talks about creating blobs but it only talks about really creating them one time. 
So the Azure portal may actually be the easiest option because of the fact that you're only going to be doing it once. If this was an ongoing process where you had to con continually create blobs, you may then want to script it. But if it's just one time, it takes, I don't know, three or four minutes to create a, uh, a storage account uh, in Azure as opposed to a half hour to an hour of creating the same thing through PowerShell or, or the Azure CLI and testing it out to make sure it works properly. All right, and then number three, what needs to be installed on your machine to let you execute Azure PowerShell commandlets? Uh, there were two things, if we remember correctly. One was PowerShell, and the second was the Azure PowerShell commandlets. So let's see, not the Cloud Shell, no. Base PowerShell product and the AZ module, I believe that's it. Uh, Azure CLI and PowerShell, no, that's not right. So let's check that. Congratulations, we did it. All right, before we finish up, let's go ahead and come back up to our script here. Uh, we can see, hey, conference demo three got created. Uh, conference demo two and keep scrolling up, conference demo one. If we go back to our virtual machines here, let's go home, virtual machines tab. I think my lab has expired. Uh, okay, so my lab may have expired and therefore I've run out of time. I can't see the virtual machines. There would normally be three VMs showing up in here, uh, but we'll take that for now. So there you go. That's automating your tasks via PowerShell. If you need additional help with this, I would look up and go to Google and I would say PowerShell Azure module. And see, this guy, will this get us to the uh, using steps? No, that just talks about installing it. Uh, overview, here we go. Overview of the PowerShell uh, documentation. That's gonna give you pretty much an introduction to everything. It will give you the links to all the commands you can run in the Azure PowerShell command line, or Azure PowerShell environment, and some suggested options on how to run them in the future.